Hey everybody, um, just thought I'd make a quick video here to show you guys how I mix my paint um, for scroll pinstriping. So I'm going to start with my lacquer thinner here and clean off my brush. Uh, starting off with the lacquer thinner, which I put in this glass bottle because if I put it in something like a paper cup or something like that, it can eat through it fairly easily. So I moved that around quite a bit in there and now I'm going to kind of wipe it a little bit with a shop towel <clears throat> and then move on to mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits, which I put in this cup, Dixie cup. Um, I try to usually do two of them. I know a lot of people use like cat food cans. Um, I don't have a cat, so I just use these. Sometimes they bleed through a little bit, but generally I don't have too much of an issue with it. So normally the oil comes off pretty easy and it doesn't take too long to go ahead and get the brush clean. Sometimes I got to wipe off some excess on the handle, but it's usually not too bad. All right. So now we're going to move on to the paint. We're going to be using one shot lettering enamel. And I already have some in a easy bottle for myself. And we're going to be using Penetrol. And I also have some of that in a nice little bottle as well. So what I do is I'll pour some into this little Dixie cup just enough to make a puddle in the very corner. So as you can see, I generally use more than that, but let me add some more. I normally start off with about the corner, a quarter of the Dixie cup, and then I'll add about 10 drops of this Penetrol. Now, not everybody uses this stuff, but I like to because it helps to enhance the flow of the paint. Now one shot does have their own uh, flow enhancer. It's called Chroma Flow. And what I do is I give that a good mix to make sure it's consistent throughout the paint. And I use these popsicle sticks to do that. Now when I'm done with this, I'm going to try to keep this little cup at an angle the entire time so it remains kind of a little puddle in the corner. I don't know if you can see that. I got a pretty bad glare here on my phone. So I'll put that off to the side. <clears throat> I like to use this little, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's like a little clip thing. It's cumbersome but it helps me out a lot to keep my cup at an angle and that is what I use for that <clears throat> so now I will be reducing the paint with the mineral spirits which is in this cup and I'll start by dipping the paint with the brush and getting a decent amount now you can't be stingy with this stuff if you do not have enough paint on your brush it won't uh, give you enough enough time to pull a long line now generally with a little bit of leftover mineral spirits that was still on this brush from when I cleaned it and the paint itself, it's already kind of thinning out the paint a little bit. It is reducing it as, as is. Um, but at the moment, as I feel it, it's a little over reduced, too thin. So I just keep working it, maybe adding more paint. <clears throat> and I feel like it starts to dry up really is what it is. And that's what kind of makes it thicker. Now, I am no professional here. I've only been doing this for about a year. And these are just things that I've kind of learned along the way. Um, as I've been kind of doing this stuff on my own. 
there's not a huge car uh, culture here in this town in Florida uh, so there's not but a few people doing pinstriping nearby so I kind of been learning on the pinstripers garage on Facebook and videos on YouTube which is what I'm making one right now and uh, kind of just been picking it up as much as I can from anybody and it's nice to be able to speak to the pros online because it's kind of wild that these guys with signature brushes will speak to you and give you advice and it's 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 an amazing community so <clears throat> I'm starting to feel like it's about there I'm gonna add just I'm barely dipping into the uh, mineral spirits add just a little bit of mineral spirits and I move it around and flop it around and shake it side to side to make sure all of the brushes all of the brush hairs get paint and I feel like I feel like I'm ready to go now keep in mind if you just load the brush and the tip looks really really fat you're gonna end up kind of like with a fat starting point but if you were to kind of knock off some of the paint off the tip and kind of form it into a point um, you'll get a thinner start off point I guess it also depends on the pressure that you push down but uh, you end up kind of with a pointy tip <clears throat> now this is something that it, it doesn't remain consistent throughout you have to adjust constantly so it's like a juggling act um, this paint is 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 constantly either drying up or getting too wet depending on how much reducer you use so don't expect it to stay the same kind of ever just hope that you've learned enough to be able to keep it workable for the time uh, that you need it As you can see I've kind of been doing it for about a minute or so two minutes maybe so it does take a little bit of time and effort and then you could pull some scrolls now this style does require a more reduced paint versus dagger or sword pinstriping um, with that style you kind of want a little bit of more drag so a drier paint where with this you kind of really need it to flow off the brush because it also determines on how well you could take your corners because if it's too dry it'll kind of kick out on you so like I said it's it's a juggling act it's a juggling act of constant reducing and, and sitting and waiting. Sometimes if you over reduce, you kind of got to wait a little bit and let the air take hold of it to where it kind of ends up back in the right consistency <clears throat> and adding paint. A lot of the mistakes I made in the beginning was not adding enough paint because I was being stingy because I'm cheap <laughs> and the paint to me was expensive. I really wasn't making any money off of it and I really still ain't but every now and then I make enough to get some more paint now what I like about scroll pin striping is kind of the fact that in my opinion to make it cool or cool looking you utilize these thinner and thicker lines by by lifting up on the brush and then pushing back down to make it wide and it, it it's almost like a three-dimensional pinstriping because you're 
instead of just drawing a straight line at an angle, um, you're kind of forcing yourself to uh, create in a, in a three-dimensional way by lifting up and pushing down and going around in circles. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you got any questions, you can send me a message. Um, I am on Instagram via pinstriping underscore something or other Instagram via underscore pinstriping. Um, I'm on Facebook, Freddie Via, and I am on YouTube, obviously under via pinstriping. So. Let me know what you think, guys. Like I said, I am not a professional. I've just been picking it up on my own and really trying to have some fun with it. Because no matter what's happening out in the world, it doesn't matter. You got to practice. <laughs> Thank you. Take it easy.